Doc, would you say probably one of the most common questions we get is what's the difference between cortisone injections versus prolotherapy or PRP? Yes, yeah, sometimes, yeah, people, you know, the doctor wants to give a cortisone shot or some other injection beside prolotherapy. And a lot of people don't realize it's actually the opposite of prolotherapy. Exactly. So a lot of times I'll have patients that have maybe even already undergone cortisone before seeking out prolotherapy or they'll come into our office mm -hmm. trying to understand what the difference is. And you're exactly right, they're, they're opposites. Cortisone, um, commonly called steroid injections, actually, people don't know this, but they actually cause more degeneration in the structure or the joint in which they're injected, where prolotherapy causes regeneration. So it's a degenerative, regenerative, you know, very different. Yeah, and then the philosophy, you know, uh, Danielle, you and I, we have the philosophy of like, let's try to actually resolve the problem so the person is well, they don't have to come in. And whenever you go down the cortisone route, it might give you pain relief, you know, for a day, a week, a month, but inevitably the problem comes back because the joint is swelling. That's one of the reasons why cortisone can give you short-term pain relief because it reduces the swelling. But the swelling is there because you have joint instability because your ligaments are damaged and the joints loose. So the body is trying to stabilize the joint by swelling it. And you and I would rather correct the reason for the swelling. And if we correct the reason for the swelling, the knee swelling or neck joint swelling, ankle joint swelling, and if we resolve that, then of course the person's well and they don't need to see doctors. And, and, and two, with cortisone, you kind of touched on it here, a lot of times the first injection is what patients deem or what they um, think is the most effective. They'll say, oh, I had one injection and it lasted like nine months, and then my second one was only three months, and then I had my third one and it's doing nothing. And what what's often not realized by the patient or maybe explained is that first one maybe gave you nine months of relief by the time you got your second one your condition is that much worse you know that same dose of cortisone is not going to be as effective because you've developed more advanced arthritis you've developed more advanced ligament or tendon injuries in that process and another thing too like you only can get three cortisone injections in a year you know and i think patients know that but they don't understand why yeah, you and I have had some interesting cases over the years, and you know, we've worked together almost 10 years, so we know each other very well. Uh, you know, like, you and I are always shocked at how quickly articular cartilage can degenerate, or a joint can just get Absolutely. destroyed in like one or two years if somebody gets cortisone shots, you know? So I think yeah. that's another thing that people have to be aware of if you get a cortisone shot and you think everything's good and then you start playing tennis yeah. and now your body actually can't swell the joint and because it can't swell the joint now you have an unstable joint but your body can't let you know that it's hurting absolutely so then because it can't let you know it's hurting you keep playing tennis and you don't realize while you're playing tennis every time you run and you go for the ball it's bam 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 and you know, then of course we see the x-rays after a year or two and it's like, oh my gosh, not good. So it's always yeah. better to not cover up the pain with cortisone, but to hopefully permanently relieve the pain with prolotherapy. There actually was a study um, that looked at cortisone injections on their own and actually cortisone injected knees with exercise you know and again cortisone it, it masks it like blocks that pain signal so you are playing tennis and you think it's it's great because you're not getting pain but you're just not actually aware of all the damage that you're doing and so this study looked at cartilage cell counts and they looked at a control you know which um did not get any cortisone knees that were injected and then knees that were injected with cortisone and were instructed to exercise and the card i mean you can tell like the actual cartilage cells like they're dying in that combination yeah that's exactly what it means and i think another good point is the cartilage is thinning or it's bone on bone it means that actually cartilage cells have died so i you know it's just kind of a deadly combination for articular cartilage to get a cortisone shot and then exercise but we could even say right that 
somebody who takes Advil? Like how many people that like they're in golf leagues or pickleball, like we're in mm -hmm. Southwest Florida, Florida yeah. so there's a lot of pickleball and then tennis, running, and then they'll take Advil before they run or they have to take yeah. Advil. So what's wrong with that or what? You know, really, if you, the more pain medications, the more of these painkillers you have to take before you exercise, I mean, you're just, any damage that you're doing is masked. You're not feeling it. Like pain is actually your body's way of telling you to stop, you know, that there is yeah. an active injury going on. But if you don't ever perceive that pain, if you don't ever feel it, you have no idea. So you'll continue to run, play tennis, pickleball, you know, X, Y, or Z on this joint that's degenerating and it's, you just don't know. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking too, for people watching this, cause it'd be really nice to know if a person knows that they got swelling in the joint. And one of the things that we recommend to people is after the exercise, you like touch your knee, like say somebody has knee pain and just see if one knee is warmer than the next. The warmth means that you got a little bit of swelling there. So if you have pain in a body part and it's, you know, it's uh, warm, that's a sign that, you know, you have swelling, inflammation in that knee. There's a reason that you have it. And the reason of course is ligament injury. And then, you know, a lot, not everybody knows about ligaments. So how would you describe ligaments to people? Yeah, I'll actually use this model. Um, so ligaments are the rubber bands, the structures in your whole skeleton that hold all of your bones together. So if we look at this model of the pelvis, I'm actually going to flip it around. So we're looking at the low back, like here's the tailbone, the sacrum, and then up your spine. All of these right here, all of these gray structures are ligaments. There's so many in your body that hold bone to bone. You know, that's what is the primary stabilizer of every joint in your body. And if they're loose, again, if it's like a rubber band that's been stretched out, not to the point necessarily where it's broken, but to the point where it, redo where it doesn't recoil back, if those ligaments are loose, you're naturally just going to have joint instability and that in and of itself is going to over time like wear down your meniscus, wear down your cartilage. Definitely, you know, if you're masking that with a steroid shot or with any kind of anti-inflammatory, it's just going to be, you know, that to the nth degree. Yeah, and I think, you know, this model actually is a good model to show that the ligaments are white. You know, like yeah. for those of us who eat meat, you know, uh, meat, of course, is red. Yep meaning that muscles have a really good blood supply. So muscles regenerative capability is very high where ligaments, because they're white, the regenerative capability is very low. And any structure of the joint, which has always been fascinating to me, like in other words, if you look at the human body and say you stop about right here where the muscles and like from here to here, all the structures right here, they're all white. Yeah. Ligaments are white, yep. tendons are white, tendons are what connect the muscles to the bone. Meniscus is white, labrum's yep. white, symphysis pubis is white. Yep. Um, the, you know, so all these white structures, their regenerative ability, their ability to repair themselves is very little. So that's the kind of the place where prolotherapy has an effect. So uh, for those people who don't know what prolotherapy is, how would you describe it? Yeah, prolotherapy, as I said before, is really the opposite of cortisone. Prolotherapy is proliferative therapy. And it's basically this um, umbrella term for any injection technique that stimulates repair of tissue, yeah. like stimulates repair of these ligaments or tendons or menisci or labrum. Um, PRP, platelet-rich plasma, stem cells are actually all considered prolotherapy because they proliferate injured tissue. And what prolotherapy does is by strengthening these ligaments and tendons and soft tissue, you actually recreate stability inside the joint so there's less force on your meniscus, cartilage, and surrounding tissue. Yeah, that's a great explanation. Then uh, I, I always, the, I don't know if you know this, but the first edition of Dr. Hackett's book, you know, Ligament and Tendon Relaxation mm -hmm. Treatment by Prolotherapy, that actually wasn't the title. The title of the first edition was Fibroblastic Proliferation. Like he hadn't, oh, I didn't know that. He hadn't coined that. It's just interesting because I have one of the editions. So the original title, he actually called it fibroblastic proliferation. When we talk about that, what are the fibroblasts? What actually do they do? And how does that relate to prolotherapy? Fibroblasts are the actual cells that will grow your ligament tissue. So in response, 
um, even to your body trying to heal itself a little bit or in response to prolotherapy, they're going to be your power horse. Yeah, like the fibroblasts are the ligament cells. So when we yeah. talk about prolotherapy, proliferative therapy, we're actually inducing those fibroblasts to basically make ligament tissue. So the ligaments get thicker and stronger. And of course, when the ligaments get thicker and stronger, the joint gets stable, low back gets stable, neck gets stable, ankle gets stable. Then when the ligaments are stronger, that joint can handle more force. Another thing that I think about too is, and we don't talk about this probably enough, is that the first structure that starts the degenerative process, the weakest link that's gonna break in the human musculoskeletal system is the ligament. So you always, if you have chronic pain, you have a chronic joint problem, you have to go right at the weakest link, which is a ligament injury. Now, why is it so hard for doctors to diagnose ligament injuries? Like, why is it often missed? Like, we always think it's like the missing yeah. structure that is causing people's pain that they, the doctor doesn't tell them. Why do you think that is? Well, a lot of imaging studies that are done, for starters, yeah. are done with patients at rest. So you might get an x-ray. X-rays aren't going to show soft tissue anyway, but even like an MRI, you know, you're going to be at rest. You're going to probably be in your least painful position most of the time because you're going to be laying flat and your joints not moving. And because of the nature of ligaments connecting bone to bone, the best way to determine if they are loose or lax is to stretch them, you know, see how far they stretch. Yeah. And one of the best ways to do that is with um, ultrasonography, with using an ultrasound in real time to stretch the joint while you're examining it. You know, that's probably the best way, but it's not done very often. Yeah, it's like if anybody's had a chronic pain and no one's ever done an ultrasound image yeah. on you, then you gotta realize like you actually haven't had the imaging that actually shows the ligaments and the instability. Yeah. So what would you say to somebody who has, um, is thinking about getting a cortisone shot? <laughs> I would absolutely ask them to reconsider and know what your other options are and also know what the, the risks are, even just the natural effects of cortisone are, because I don't think a lot of people understand that. And well, the it, natural risk is it actually weakens the ligaments and tendons. So yeah. you, you know, with structures that don't repair very good, it's not a good idea to, in, to do something that absolutely. actually can weaken and weaken the ligament and tendon. And so if you're someone that's been recommended for a cortisone shot, or maybe you're someone that's already tried cortisone and, and you're like the person I described before, where it's just becoming less and less effective, um, really, I, I would encourage you to educate yourself on prolotherapy and reach out to us if you would like us to review your case. We'd love to hear from you.